Good morning. Uh, welcome to the video, everybody. It's time for the monthly wrap up. We'll talk about reading, we'll talk about writing, we'll talk about any life things for the month of May. So grab a coffee. I don't actually think this is gonna be that long, so feel free to not grab a coffee, but actually always grab a coffee. Unless it's the evening, then maybe grab like some tea or water or something. I feel like May I had a lot of high expectations for. And I actually feel like it was overall a very good month. I just didn't quite get through my whole book, which was a little silly that I thought I was gonna be able to do that in one month anyway, so really it's fine. But let's start with the reading. Um, I read kind of a moderate amount of books this month, not anything like nine. Nine books, that's pretty good actually. A few of them were rereads. The first reread that I read was Between Shades of Grey, not Fifty Shades of Grey, not that, Between Shades of Grey by um, Ruta Zepedes, I think is how you pronounce her name. She writes a lot of young adult historical fiction. Um, and this was a book I read in middle school, like I've, and I won it in like a library, like I got good grades and they gave me a free book to choose from the library sale in middle school. And I haven't read it in a while. And for some reason, I just like saw it on my shelf and I was like, I'm gonna reread that book. It's about during World War II, Oh, Stalin's Reign of Terror, I think is what, it, they, what it's referred to in history, and just about this family from Lithuania who was brought to essentially like work camps during World War II and kind of their whole story. Very depressing and sad, but good to read. Then I read um, The Girl in Question by Tess Sharp, which I think was a new release. It's the second book to The Girls I've Been, which is ink robbery kind of a book but the girl, but it's like YA. And so these teenagers are like trapped in this bank, but the girl, her mom had been a con artist and made her be all these different girls throughout her life. And so she uses that skill to kind of thwart the bank robbers. That's the first book. The second book, it follows the same characters, but like there's someone from her past coming back for her. Drama. Um, I really, the book I'm Gas Station is actually has a lot of similar themes. It's adult, but like there's some similarities in the like sort of vibes and themes, but like types of conflict. So it's been good to read those to kind of like some maybe comp titles, that kind of thing. Then I read so the Once Upon a Broken Heart, that whole trilogy I read, it was good. I didn't really read it all in one, like three days or something. Usually series like that, I enjoy them more when I read them all within the course of two days. And I just am realizing about myself, I think I'm growing out of young adult fantasy a little bit. I still love to reread all of the like young adult and new adult fantasy that I loved, but anything new that I pick up, I just like am not enjoying it as much as I used to. And I know there are parts of this book, like I did really like it and I ate up parts of it. And I still like when I think about a lot of the fantasy series that I, I like, I just like I adored the last few years. I still will go back and reread and still enjoy those. I think I just, either I'm not finding the right ones or it's just not, I feel like I've read so many of them at this point that they're all sort of starting to read a similar way which is not to the fault of the author. Thrillers get that way too. I've, every genre, if you read too much of it in a certain period of time, you can like predict it too easily, you know? And so I think I just need to break, because even like Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows, I enjoyed, but I know if I'd have read that last year, I would have been obsessed with it. And that the same way with this series. It's about, it follows, I would read Caraval, Caraval, first, that trilogy, and it follows some of the characters and some new ones. It's kind of like, the way people describe this book, it's like a brand new fairy tale. It's not like a fairy tale retelling or fae, hot fae that shift into birds. Like it's not that energy. It's not Sarah Janet and it's not fairy tale retellings. It's kind of, but it has a fairy tale feeling. Like the things that are happening are very like, you're reading this in a fairy tale, you know? That's where I'm at with that. And then I read Stay Dead by April Henry. I think I talked about this. I hauled this book earlier this month. Um, it's a YA, I would even argue middle grade thriller. The author, I read a lot of her books when I was in middle school and they were all like, a girl gets stolen, like kidnapping from middle schoolers, which is maybe 
a little dark, but I mean, it's like, I mean, if you read Percy Jackson or Harry Potter, like, people are getting kidnapped in those books too. It's not like, and people get kidnapped in real life at that age. Okay, that got so morbid and horrible. I'm so sorry, everyone. What, oh, should, what should I tell you what the book is about? So it's about this girl and her mom is a senator and her dad was a senator, but then died in a car accident. And she's in boarding school and she's troubled teen. And then she gets kicked out of the boarding school and her mom like, flies to pick her up in the private jet and then the private jet crashes in the middle of nowhere and her mother's like dying words to her are like here's a key give it to someone don't let them know you're alive so she's running away from everybody not letting anybody know she's a less kind of like survival in the woods it got it starts very dark because like she's in a plane crash and everybody dies and then she's just like living and i'm like well that was a depressing way to start a middle grade book it's actually it was in the ya section so I think it's, but it's younger YA for sure. So that, it was good. It was classic April Henry. I read it in one sitting. It's kind of what I was looking for. I'm gonna call this section of the reading update my unhinged period reading, because usually it's like a mafia romance that I feel like reading when I'm on my period. I can't explain it. I don't know why, but this time, one of my friends had watched someone's YouTube video and they were talking about all these Amish romances but they were like crime Amish romances with a lot of kidnapping in them. So I did read five Amish kidnapping romance books. I did, and I enjoyed the heck out of them. I really did like them though. They weren't like top quality literature, but they were all very like Amish girl, and there's an undercover detective, and like they fell in love. But I really liked how it didn't, like it, the message of every book wasn't like become Amish. Like some of the couples ended up being Amish at the end. Like the guy became Amish at the end. And some of the couples, like the girl was like, you know what, Amish life isn't for me. But there's just like a lot of respect for the Amish people, but also like not pushing like you, everybody needs to be Amish kind of an energy. I really did enjoy that. My favorite was Amish Amnesia. That's what the book is called, where this woman is like on the side of the road and she doesn't know who she is or where she's from and what's going on. And this detective finds her on the side of the road, but he's like, still has an injury. He's like, on, like he can't be on the force. So he like has, like he takes care of her and her, his house. And like, she's like, maybe I'm Amish. I don't know. That was my unhinged period reading for the month. And I do recommend. I don't know if I would have liked it had I not been on my period. I think here's what the, it, a book like this needs to like be wacky and interesting enough to distract me from the pain of my uterus, but also like low-key sort of good. So if you need something like that, the Amish romances, there's like 50 of them. Then I read, um, I, this is my audiobook for the month. I just finished it yesterday, is King of Country by C.F. Farnsworth. I have, I don't know how I heard about this, some booktube or somewhere. And it's, so it's essentially about this girl who works as a, at a record label and she, there's this country music star who doesn't want to re-sign his label for some reason and so the label is like, hey worker, go down to Texas and try to convince this guy to sign the deal. And she's like, I don't even like country music. I'm not even attracted to this really attractive millionaire country star with a troubled past. I wonder why he doesn't want to sign his record label. I mean, come on. And so then she goes and lives on the farm. We're bailing hay. We're going to the rodeo. We're singing at the state fair. We're having love confessions in the farm. We're making jam. We're going back to New York on the plane and he's gonna follow the plane. Are you kidding? It's a Hallmark movie. It's a, it's a country Hallmark movie. Um, I, I think I gave it four stars or three to four stars. I'm very generous with star ratings. If I enjoy, if I leave the book and I'm like, yeah, I feel good about it. That was a vibe. I give it a four. If I finish it and I was like, my mind is blown, I give it a five. If it was like, okay, I'll give it a three. If it was bad, if I read it and I was like, I did not enjoy that, then it's a two. I don't think I've ever given a book a one star and maybe that's mean of me or good of me. I don't know. I'm looking through all my Goodreads ratings for the year, and I was definitely way too generous on so many of these. I'll boost the authors. However you rate books is fine with me. And you, you don't owe the author anything. I always just am like, well, if I don't like a book, I'm often like, well, maybe it was just because of certain things that are specific to me. It doesn't mean it's a bad book just because I didn't like it, you know? So that was, I think that's all the books I read. So it was a good month for reading. 
Writing wise, let's look at YouTube, which is actually not writing. But I'm gonna first update you on that. So in the month of May, I posted one, two, nine videos and I went live six times. So around 15 videos total. And I think I posted one TikTok, I don't know. Um, if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. Um, I do these once a month, but I do a, like pretty regular writing blogs. I post about two to three times a week and I'm trying to go live Tuesday and Thursday morning for sure. I think I'm gonna be adding a few mornings to that too. Also feel free to follow me on TikTok, Alyssa and the Books on TikTok. Or maybe one post every five months when I feel like I wanna be TikTok again okay um but the writing itself i was watching i just like watched the first video and made a remind myself where i started i think i got through about 10 chapters of gas station which is good i think i had had an intention at one point to like finish the book in may that was silly of me um but i am i think i'm exactly halfway through the book actually which is nice so i'm giving it to readers i think i said the beginning of june so that's aggressive i have two readers who are like alpha readers for me and so i'm going to give them the up until the midpoint so i think actually in the next video i'm like take, i'm going to finish out the midpoint because i just have a little bit left of that and if i say the word midpoint one more time you guys and then put it into a word document and maybe do a little bit of a like scan through like correct all grammar changes kind of a thing um, so that while I have people reading the first half, I can finish out the book and that will also give me some external motivation to like actually write the second half of the book in June so that I can give like, people will be like, oh my gosh, what happens next? So that's very motivating for me. So i um, hoping to do the second half in June and then when I get the feedback returned. I feel like I'm making good progress though and I'm actually bringing in readers a lot earlier than I usually do. Because it feels so strong as it is, I feel like it's ready for that at this point. Um, the sentences are gonna be rougher than usual, but I think these readers are for the plot to make sure that there's no holes and to make sure that people are interested and engaged in the right things. So I'm excited about that. So that's kind of where we're at with the writing life. So I ran my 5K yesterday, which was exciting. I did it, I placed 13,359, thank you. That was out of like 3,000 people though. So I was in the top half. I had about a 12 minute mile pace. I did it with my sister and we walked like three different times, but we only walked for like a block. So I would say we ran most of it, especially because like they track you with a little chip, which is kind of creepy. I actually need to throw that away. With that, like it tells you your mile time and our pace was like 13, 12 minutes or something like that. So we must've been running fast because we walked. I was exhausted. I also did everyone, I started my triathlon training last week. So I've so far done two bikes, two runs, a swim this last week. And I have started the TikTok about it. So if you wanna follow me on TikTok, alyssa.tries, I will, I will link that down below. If you wanna follow me for all the non-riding related things, it's not gonna be super regular over there, but just like, well, it might be. Sometimes I go a little crazy. I did buy a GoPro, it's fine. Documenting, my triathlon training journey, you know, it's me. So like, I am not gonna be like, everyone, I just ran 10 miles and I'm not even sweating. Like it's a little bit more, I'm hoping realistic and comedic of like out of me just being out of breath all the time. I have a recap of my 5K up right now. If you wanna check that out, shameless plug for me. What else happened in May? Construction is still happening outside if you can't tell. Things are good, I'm feeling good, I feel like Every day in May, I don't want to say every day, but I was up at my alarm and I was either writing or getting videos edited. Like I was up at the same time being productive and right away in the morning and going to bed at, at when I wanted. Like I just like really stuck to my routines in May and that was really hopeful and I'm really happy about that. So that was good. Let me know how your May went. What are you excited about for the summer? What are your big writing summer plans? Also, if you have a time other than 6 a.m. Central Time that you'd like to do live sprints, I'm thinking about adding, maybe like a Sunday afternoon sprint or a Sunday evening or like some evening during the week too, because I know it's so early for people on the West Coast. So thank you for if you've come to those. And I've seen a, actually like a surprising amount of people watch the replays too. So thanks for that. But I also do sometimes reveal information on those that are not going in main videos. 
So like when I got my little proof Barnes and Nobley copies, I showed those to the people on the live stream first. I had a little bit of a mini query update over there. So also everyone on the live streams has so much good information about things that I can submit my book to. So come for all the hot tips. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Tell me how your writing went. What can we do as a community to support you writing? Be well. I'll see you guys in the next video.